so well, welcome to ph101 lab uh, this is our uh, experimental demonstration part of the of our third experiment ballistic pendulum so let's understand the apparatus used to calculate the muzzle velocity and what we have discussed in part 1 so we know that we have discussed this in our experiment this is the locking stick used to lock the ball this is actually the projectile launcher as you can see there are three ranges it is a plumb bob which should be 8 0 degrees this is the release ring when we lock the ball which we will be doing shortly this is actually the pendulum this is actually the pendulum and it it can oscillate back and forth so you can see here you can see it's the pendulum here it, it we have the catcher and inside the catcher we have a ball so if you want to release the ball you have to push it so this is actually so this is so this is actually the ball now this is the catcher this is the catcher it is the ball bearing here we have the degree scale and this you can see this black pointer is called the angle of deflection indicator so actually it is connected with this pendulum so if it moves the angle of deflection indicator will move also so actually it it tells you the angular displacement of the projectile so this is actually the angle of deflection indicator so keep in mind this is the initial setup so what you have to do is if you want to lock the ball at long range and then you will pull this thread towards yourself and the ball will leave the barrel with a muzzle velocity now as it leaves the barrel it will strike this catcher and it has a hole here the catcher will catch the ball and then it will move with some velocity so as it, as it moves as you can see that the angle of deflection indicator also moves so let's say it moves a little high it was the initial position here it was it was here at the mean position at the instant we pull the thread after locking the ball it will move with certain velocity with certain velocity covering some angular displacement which so it, here from here we will calculate our theta let's say it is it it moves here now it will come back definitely so you can clearly see that the angle is here the angle here is 27.5 degrees so by looking on to this degree scale the angle of deflection indicator will tell you the value of theta which we will need for our height calculation h is equal to rc 1 minus into 1 minus cos of theta so we will get theta from here and then we will calculate the height which will be our h1 so we have to do it for four trials now the second thing is how to lock the ball we will now we will move this pendulum with the catcher above and we will lock it or we will place it here right like this so initially what we have to do is to place the ball in the barrel of the projectile launcher so this is our ball so we it has a mass of mb so its ball its mass will be mb so you can calculate its mass from the spring uh, by using a balance so you can calculate calculate its mass now what we have to do is we have to place the ball here right so first you have to lock the ball using this stick so we will lock the ball let's say at the medium range first i have locked the ball so you have to lock the ball at the medium range now you will have to move this pendulum back to its original position now you have to take care of two things the first thing is this angle of deflection indicator should be initially at 0 degrees right you can see it is exactly at 0 degrees so you have to keep in mind now the second thing is this is very important now after uh, locking the ball when i will pull this thread the ball will leave this projectile launcher and as it leaves it will have a muzzle velocity at the instant it strikes the catcher it will stuck inside the catcher and then the catcher with, uh, which is the, which is a part of which is the part of this pendulum will move covering some distance angular displacement from here theta so you have you will not down the theta let's say it's 25 degrees so what i am trying to say is when the ball is stuck inside the catcher then then the mass of the catcher will be mv plus mc and it will be moving with velocity v not v not 
V is the velocity after the collision which we have already discussed. Now let's now let's fire the ball. What happened? So you see, you can see that as I fired the ball, the ball has, is now stuck inside the catcher. The catcher has catched the ball, as you can see. And from here, you can see that the angle of deflection has moved a distance of angular displacement of its. The angle is 33 degrees. The angle is 33 degrees. So this is your theta one. You have to note it down. Now for the second case, you will again release the ball using this pin as you push it the ball will come out as you can see now you will again keep it straight right you will place the ball here right you will lock it at the medium or at the so if the mass of the ball is more you will have to lock the ball at let's say at medium range and if it's not working at for the medium mid, let's say the angle is very small then you can lock the ball at long range so let's say i'm locking the ball at again at medium range i am not using the long range let after locking the ball we will again move this pendulum to back to its initial position and the pointer should be again here we have the deflection indicator or the pointer which tell us the angle of deflection theta so again you will have to place it at 0 degrees when i will fire the ball again by pulling the thread again the catcher will catch the ball and in the angle of deflection from here we have noted down we have to note it down it's now 40 40 degrees the angle is now 40 degrees so our theta 2b will be 40 degrees now you have to repeat this experiment four times then you will calculate theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 by noting by by looking onto the uh, degree scale after calculating theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 you will have you will get four heights h1 h2 h3 when the pendulum moves from here to here you will calculate this height which we have already discussed now we will take the average and then we will get the value of h which we will be discussing shortly again so this is the way how to calculate the value of h now initially there are two parts of this experiment so the first part of this experiment is to calculate the initial velocity of this ball as it leaves the barrel so the initial velo velocity we will call it the muzzle velocity part one velocity and for the second experiment for the first experiment, you will keep this pendulum here. There is no need to use this for the first part. So the first part is exactly the same as we did it in a, as we did it in our experiment number one. What you have to do is we will keep a white paper here, right here. It is similar to the first experiment. So you can check it out. First, we have to keep a white paper right in front of the projectile launcher and the distance from this plus position to the edge of the paper can be calculated using this meter stick. So you, I will keep this meter stick here and I will calculate from this plus position to the edge of the paper. So this will be our x dash which we have already uh, discussed. Now the second thing will be I will then keep a carbon paper on the top of a, our white paper right here. Then I will lock the ball at medium range or at short range. Let's say I am locking the ball at medium range and then I will pull this thread again and we have to record 10 trials and after recording 10 trials we will get distances we will get dots here uh, by removing this carbon paper so right here I have a dot now now what you have to do is to calculate the this distance of this dot from the edge of the paper so this will be our x1 net less for the second trial we will get x2 x3 x4 you have to take the average of all these recorded values so we will get the x average then you have to add this x average with the with this fixed horizontal distance and we will get the total horizontal distance from this plus position to the last dot now using this x i know the position of this launcher i know the position of this launcher so the position of this launcher from the surface of the table is let's say it's about 7.5 centimeter so this is our vertical distance to this plus position from the floor of the table to this plus to the point of launch of the ball so i will get the value of y from here t is equal to under root 2y by g using this relation i can calculate the time of flight so i have calculated this x total distance i will divide this total dis distance divide by the time of flight 
I will get the initial velocity of this ball which is our muzzle velocity and this is our part 1 muzzle velocity. So, in the first case you have just to repeat the first experiment. Now, let us move to the second part. In the second part what you have to do is uh, what you have to do is to lock the ball let us say I am locking the ball for the second case we have to use this ballistic pendulum we have, we have to use this setup. So, this setup including this is the ballistic pendulum. We will keep this ball here in the barrel and then we will lock it using the locking stick like this right. So, you will you will lock the ball at medium range. Now, what we have to do is you can remove the white paper there is no need to use this now in the second part you will pull this pendulum with the catcher to its initial position. Now, the next step is to move this angle of deflection indicator to 0 degrees. Now, we will fire the ball right you will have to just pull this thread and as you pull this what happens the ball leaves the barrel it strikes the catcher. So, here comes the collision it is in elastic collision and what will happen if you see again let me repeat let us lock, lock, lock it right let us lock it. Now, pull this thread again what will happen the pendulum will move it will oscillate right we have discussed this and it will catch the ball its mass after collision will be mb plus including the mass of the ball initially the mass of the ball was mb and after it mass will be mb plus mc its velocity initially was v naught before the collision after the collision its velocity as the catcher moves with the pendulum its velocity will be mb plus mc into v v is the velocity of the catcher after the collision keep in mind so when i will pull this thread as you can see it moves and this angle of deflection indicator will tell you the angle theta. So, you have to repeat this experiment 4 times then you will put the value of theta into h is equal to r c 1 minus cos of theta. So, what, what is r c? r c is the distance of this pendulum from this position from the top fixed position to the center of mass of the catcher. So, the center of mass of this catcher is here keep in mind right in the middle its center of mass the distance from here to here is r c distance from this fixed position of this pendulum to this center of mass is r c. So, how to calculate this keep this at the center of mass of the catcher and the distance is about 29.5 centimeter from the center of mass of the catcher to this fixed position to this fixed position this fixed position it is r c and its value is here its value is 29.5 centimeter. Now, the next thing is r b the distance from this center of mass sorry the distance from this fixed position to the center of mass of the, the center of mass of the ball. So, the ball is a little down the ball is at a little the ball is at the bottom of the catcher. So, the value of r c and r b, r b will be slightly different. So, the center of mass of the ball is right a little below the center of mass of the catcher. So, I will keep the meter rod here from the center of mass of the ball here and its value is now it is it is now 35 its value is 30.5 centimeter the value of r b is 30.5 centimeter r b is the distance from this fixed position to the center of mass of the ball keep in mind and r c is the distance to the center of mass of the cager. It is very, so it is clear you have to repeat four trials and what to do next I will explain this on the whiteboard. Now, after understanding the ballistic pendulum uh, experimentally as we have discussed uh, on our workstation there are two parts of calculations. So, actually this is our experimental demonstration and this data can be extracted from our experimental observation. So, there are two parts of this experiment in the first part which is which is the muzzle velocity calculation and we call it the part 1 v naught and the second part is the ballistic pendulum in which we will involve the collision in which we fire in which we fire the ball which strikes the catcher and it imparts a velocity to the velocity v to the catcher. So, there are two parts. So, 
the first part is exactly the same as we have calculated the initial velocity of the ball in our very first experiment. So actually in the first experiment we will not be using the ballistic pendulum. We will place the pendulum above. We will lock it. We will we will move the pendulum above and we will lock it there. In the first uh, so in the first part we will not be using the pendulum. We will be just using or you can say that we will be just repeating our experiment number one. So we already discussed this in our experiment number one. We have to take certain trials. We will lock the ball as we did it. We locked the ball and then we took trials. The horizontal distance x1, x2, x3. x1 is the distance of the first dot from the edge of the paper. x2 is the distance of the second dot from the edge of the paper. And then we have to take trials as we did it. And then we will take the average x a v g. So this is the average of the of the dots or the distance from the edge of the paper. So it's the average distance. Now we, we will add this distance with the x dash. So x dash as we did it is the fixed horizontal distance from the plus symbol to the edge of the paper. So we know that th this x dash, x average and time of light can be calculated by 2 y by g. y is the max vertical height as we discussed. So from here we will get the time of light and we will put this value here. So x plus x average is equal to x and time period we can calculate easily. So we will get v0. So in the first experiment we were calling this velocity to be the initial velocity of the ball. So actually it is the muzzle velocity. So this will be our first part muzzle velocity part 1. It's, it will be our first part. Now the second part involves the ballistic pendulum. Now in the second part when the ball collides with the pendulum, when the ball collides with the catcher and it is stuck inside the catcher, then what will be the case? So we already calculated this relation h is equal to rc1 minus cos of theta and we have to fill some tables. So this is table 1 and this is our second table. Now in keep in mind v is equal to under root 2gh, we have already calculated, I am not going into the details, you can check the, uh, the first part of this video, uh, lecture. So it is the velocity after the collision, v0 is equal to x by t is the part 1 muzzle velocity. It should be noted that it is muzzle velocity calculated from part 1. Keep in mind. This is the muzzle velocity. We have derived this relation. v0 is equal to mv plus mc mv under root 2gh. So this is actually the calculated muzzle velocity. mv is the mass of the ball which is 61.28 grams. mc is the mass of the catcher which catches the ball is 235 grams. So you are now uh, so, are, so you are now clear about these things. So rc is the length of the pendulum to the center of mass of the catcher. And Rb as we have calculated is the length of the pendulum up to the center of mass of the ball. So first you need to calculate these things as we did it. Now what we will do, we will first find 4 trials. We will in order to fill table 1, you need 2 things. The first one is to note theta down from the degree scale. So when you note theta down, you will get h1. And how uh, you will get h1 and this h1 can be calculated from theta 1. Let's say this is 25 degrees. So you will put here 25 degrees rc we have already calculated. You will get the h value. So if this is first so it will be h1. Let's say it is let's say it is uh, 1.5 centimeter and your theta was let's say 25 degree as we have discussed. So it depends on your calculations and your observations. So theta 2 will be some other value, theta 3 will be some other value. So you will be doing it for the short range. You can do it for the short range, for the long range as well as for the medium range. So if you want to do it, you should do it for the long range. So then we will calculate h2, theta 2 for the second trial. Theta 2 we will place this theta 2 so it will become theta 2. Rc is fixed, we have calculated it. We will get h2. In the second case we will get h2 then in the third case we will put t theta 3 here we will get h3 then in the fourth case we will get h4 from theta 4 and this is calculated from this right angle triangle which we have already discussed in our previous lecture so th these, these these are the prerequisites so where h is equal to h average so we will take the average of these heights by dividing by the number of trials. So this is the, there are four trials. We will divide it by four. We will get a single h. So actually this h represents an average value. Keep in mind this h represents the average value. Now this is very simple to calculate. Now what is the average height? Just very simple. 
you have 2gh you will get the average value of h from here put it here so we you will get the velocity after the collision so you will write the value here now in the second case the muzzle velocity v not part one so it actually it is the velocity you have calculated from the part one just like you did it in the experiment number one and it is the velocity v naught is the velocity the muzzle velocity which we have calculated using law of conservation of momentum so we have derived this equation don't worry you can go and check the uh, the first part of this lecture so this is the calculated muzzle velocity so you have the mass of the ball you have the mass of the catcher and this is the height the average value so you just need to plug the values and you will get the calculated muzzle velocity now you will put the calculated muzzle velocity here now what is the velocity after the collision you have calculated the velocity after the collision using this relation and average height is you have calculated the average height from here so you have filled this table now what is this percentage difference this percentage difference is actually the difference between the muzzle velocity and the muzzle velocity sorry this is the difference between percentage difference is calculated between the muzzle velocity and the calculated muzzle velocity so it's very simple let's say this is uh, the muzzle velocity from part 1 is 3.9 and the muzzle and the calculated muzzle velocity is 3.6 so you need to so it will be 3.9 minus 3.6 divided by 3.9 multiplied with 100% so you will get the percentage error definitely uh, we calculate the muzzle velocity using this formula for the comparison purposes uh, for example you want to check the muzzle velocity from part 1 and the calculated muzzle velocity so what what much what is the difference between the percentage difference between these two velocities so it will be something less than it should be less than 10 at least or it should be less than 5 for this case now when you calculate the difference there are some other things you need to know the first thing is the time period of this pendulum is we tell the students that its time period is 2.1.096 uh, seconds so you can also calculate this value if you want to using this time period relation 2 pi by under root rc rc is the length of the pendulum up to the center of mass of the catcher as we have calculated and g is the, uh, the gravitational acceleration so if you put this value you will you will get this value so uh, you can either put this plug this value directly or you can calculate using the time period relation and you have to calculate the loss in the kinetic energy so the loss in the kinetic energy is kinetic energy up before collision that is the initial kinetic energy minus kinetic energy after the collision that is the final kinetic energy dividing by the kinetic energy initial multi absolute and multiplied with 100 percent so how to do it we have discussed this in our previous lecture so i will briefly explain it simply that for the kinetic energy initial kinetic energy initial it will be it's because before the collision so before the collision the ball is not uh, inside the cager so the velocity will be half mass of the ball mv and the, it's it's having the muzzle velocity so v square so you will get the kinetic energy initial from here now the kinetic energy after the collision which which i am calling the k dot e f in the subscript is equal to half now after the collision the ball is stuck inside the catcher and it's moving with the catcher so we will take both the masses mass of the ball as well as the mass of the catcher so we will get mb plus nc and now it's moving with v the velocity after the collision so we will put here v so now you have you have the table you will just took you will just use these values in this equation and uh, when you and uh, when you have calculated the kinetic energy in initial and the kinetic energy final you can easily calculate the percentage loss in the kinetic energy so this is very simple now by involving some rotational factors uh, by inv by involving some rotational quantities for example inertia angular frequency because we can because the end uh, the pendulum is oscillating so we can we have the angular displacement so we can introduce angular quantities so we have calculated this relation again so i have written it directly in experimental demonstration v naught is equal to 1 over mv rb you know these values too it is inertia and mb plus mc into gh mb plus mc into 
gh so where i is equal to mb plus mcg rcm which is you can call it rcm or rc t square is the time period for pi square i have derived this equation as well as this equation in the first part so from here you will calculate the i you will plug this value here the time period can be either plugged directly which is 1.096 or you can calculate this time period from here so you will put it here now from here you will calculate the inertia and the, the value of the inertia you can put it here so we will get the muzzle velocity now what is the muzzle it's actually the exact value it's actually the exact value this is actually the exact value of the muzzle velocity using this equation it's the exact value and using this method using this method v naught is equal to mb plus mc under root 2 gh it's actually the calculated method or the approximate method we have discussed this in our previous uh, part one theory and calculations part so this is all about this experiment it's not very difficult it seems to be difficult but it's not very difficult you have to understand the the prerequisites and the basic idea how to perform this experiment so hope so you understand now uh, what is ballistic pendulum and how uh, linear momentum is used to find these quantities the muzzle velocity and how kinetic energy is not conserved you have now the basic understanding of the uh, elastic collision inelastic collision and more importantly you know the purpose of this experiment so the purpose of this experiment was to calculate the muzzle velocity using the conservation of momentum thank you